In the previous videos, we saw how the self-awareness guidance and the Koya Deep Shrink notes can help create stunning images. Let's now combine these two notes and add some upscaling to it and create a workflow that is easy to use, easy to work with, that can create these stunning images. The workflows are available for download via the link in the description. There's multiple uh, workflows. This one is the default turbo or without turbo. Uh, the three columns on the left generate the image and then here this red node that is a switch with, with which we can switch the upscaling on or off. Uh, mostly at the beginning it's off because you like to render a whole lot of images and then select one or two that you like to upscale. Let's create an image. The three columns on the left, that's where the image is created. And we have here a file name node, that's where we can enter a text. And that uh, text is the file name uh, for the images. Every node that outputs an image and that you save on your disk that will uh, have this file name. The second thing to do is to select a uh, checkpoint and in this example I will be using the Turbo Dream Shaper version 2.1 in the meantime. Then we go to the left column where we can select a image size or you can still type in the numbers. By the way uh, this is my personal list and I have added this uh, file to the folder where you can download it and use it yourself. And then the interesting uh, custom node is the uh, prompt styler where we can enter our positive and negative text. By the way, we are going to render a very simple image, a French woman walking her beagle colorful flower dress and shopping street, that's all. Uh, the interesting thing of this prompt styler is that you can add a style to the prompt uh, from a drop down list, so that's very quick and easy. The base prompt does not add anything, but uh, if we select another um, style from this list, then in the background it will add a certain amount of keywords. And those keywords, there's a whole lot of uh, keywords that already come uh, with this custom note, but you can also add your own. And uh, maybe you remember a couple of videos back, we had these 14 keywords that if you use those, almost always your images have a little bit more pop. Uh, I added those keywords here in my pulse long um, uh, style and here they are. These keywords, they came from that video and I uh, edited this JSON file myself and you can do this too. All right, so we are ready to render uh, the image first with the base style, so nothing added. That renders this, well, a not very spectacular image, but the, it does exactly what our prompt said. Uh, and then we add that uh, 14 keywords in the style and then we get this image. Well, that already looks a bit nicer, more colorful and even the girl uh, looks more beautiful, if I am allowed to say that. This prompt styler is very powerful, uh, what, whatever style you select, let's do one example, art style impressionist, uh, you just click on it and it will add in the background a certain amount of keywords to your prompt and all of a sudden we get this painting out of the exact same prompt that we timed in. That's very, very, very nice. Okay, next step on our columns is uh, the loader that has uh, some slots available to add a LoRa. If we select a LoRa from the list, let's do this example paint oil or water. Uh, then once we selected it, it will add a couple more slots where we can enter the strength of the LoRa. I have put it here on 0 0.8. 
and then we render another image and we get an oil slash water painting. It's uh, even a quite nice painting with this very simple prompt. All right, so we have rendered an image. Well, probably the, the, the normal way of working is render a lot of images uh, until you find one that you really like. And that is then the one that we are going to upscale. Uh, so the first step of upscaling is over here, a latent upscaler. And it works with a, a, a multiplication factor. I put it on 1.5. You can change that number. Uh, just play around and, and look what works fine for you. For me, 1.5 is a sort of compromise between speed and quality. And then in a latent upscale, uh, it is important to put the denoise somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6. Values below and values above. Uh, not so good uh, as an output. Uh, I always put it on 0.454 and never touch it again. What comes out of this? Uh, well, this was the default render. Now have a close look here at these ceramic pots. They suddenly, yes, there we go. They suddenly have a lot more detail. Uh, let's go back. Also have a look here at the dog, uh, the front of the dog and also the head of the dog. Uh, there we go, it has certainly a lot more detail. A uh, uh, funny thing is look at her toe, that is a quite a strange toe over there. And if we upscale, it's a lot better already. And also all the other details on the image, uh, there are more of them, there's a bit more color. So that upscale did something positive to this image. Her face though. It does not yet look very, very good, which often happens with persons on a certain distance. Uh, it's difficult to render a very nice face. But that is why we have in our default workflow the uh, face detailer node. It is the one from the impact pack. It also needs a couple of models that you have to download. So. Uh, in order to get this all working, it's best to have a look at the website uh, of the ConfUI Impact Pack. There uh, are all the details and explanations what you need to do to get this working. Once it is working, this is the actual face detailer column, but it does not output an image by itself. So we have to uh, create another node to output the image. And by the way, uh, with all the images that are uh, output it from these notes. You can always select if you want to save it or only preview it or even hide it. That's your choice per image that is going to be output. And also over here I added this note where we can even uh, select a, a size for this particular image output. All right, let's render with the face detailer switched on like it is now. This was our uh, uh, image after the latent upscale. This is the face. Let's now switch. There we go. Three, two, one, go. Well, that is a nicer face. Let's switch back and forth a couple of times. Back. Not so nice. And with the face detailer, yes. Yeah, that is nicer. Back is less nice and face detailer nicer. That definitely worked. So far, so good. In case you have an image that does not have a face to be detailed, well, then you can simply bypass the whole face detailer node by hitting uh, Ctrl Q and the uh, image will go straight through to the upscaler. Uh, so let's have a look at the upscaler. That is the final step in our sequence. Um, first of all, we can decide over here with these uh, connectors what image we are going to send to the upscaler. And we have three choices. The way it is connected now in this top connector, it comes from the face detailer. Well, in a normal sequence, you would like to um, upscale that image, but we bypass the face detailer in this example right now, which means that the upscaler is now connected uh, to the latent upscale image. And that can be a choice. If you like that image, then you upscale that one. And if we would connect the upscaler to the lower connector, then we are connected all the way back to the first rendering. 
And then we can upscale that image. So we have three choices what we send to the upscaler. Uh, the upscaler uses a model. There's a website with uh, hundreds or maybe thousands of models. I tried a lot of them. This is my personal shortlist. These are more than enough upscale models for me. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. It's best to do your own tests and see what you like because your personal preferences may differ, of course. So we select an upscaler and note that oftentimes they are uh, by default upscaling two times or four times or there are even some upscalers that can do eight times but that is a factor that you are stuck to and that is why uh, the uh, last note uh, before creating the image is to select a size of the image we are going to shrink it back yeah it's not needed you can uh, upscale uh, and when with this latent upscale we have already 1500 pixels so times four then we have 6000 pixels if you like that image that's okay but i have a 4k monitor the vertical size is 2160 so i always down scale them back to my monitor size that's a choice it's totally up to you uh, finally we are going to send out the image uh, this is a large image in the ping format it will be uh, 10 or 20 megabytes but you can also select over here to uh, uh, output it as a jpeg so that that specific note is very nice to have at the final upscale step well let's have a look at our uh, final image this was the first image out of the first sampler phase that was a, a 1000 pixel image and then uh, out of all these steps that we went through this is the image that comes out well that is a whole lot better image with a whole lot more detail and also the face uh, detailed so this was uh, the initial render and this was the final outcome all right let's uh, have a look now at something else um, we are going to render a new image, uh, a Scandinavian girl with a sweater and jeans. Let's have a go. This image comes out of the first sampler, a thousand pixel image, and that is not, uh, not really bad at all for a first step. Then we go to the latent upscaler with a factor of 1.5. We now get some 1500 pixels, and that image looks more detailed. As we can see, this was original, this is after latent upscale. It also changed a little bit, that is because of that uh, denoise factor of 0.54 that I have. That means that your image is going to change a little. This was original, this was changed. I personally never mind, but there seem to be a lot of people who don't like that change. Let's do the face restoration or face detailer. This is without, this is, this is after the latent sampler and this is after the face detailer. Yeah, that is a nicer face. And then the final image upscale step, then we have this image as the final image. Well, that looks okay already, but what happened to uh, that self-awareness guidance note that we talked about uh, a video ago and the Koya Deep Shrink. Well, let's just add them right now. Here they are, the Koya Deep Shrink note and the self-attention guidance note. They are to be placed somewhere in our model to uh, model out to model in input and output points. So let's have a look how we can handle that. The first thing that we can do is because we have the Koya Deep Shrink, we can increase just as a test our image size so that we do not even need any upscaling anymore. We uh, immediately go to a quite large size. And what I did here is the model output, I put it to the deep shrink. Then the output of the deep shrink goes to the self-attention guidance and the output of that goes to my sampler. And let's have a look what comes out of that. Oh, wait, first I uh, have to tell a little bit about these parameters here. The block number I have put on four. I did a little bit of testing, but not a thorough testing, but this looks good. And there was something who replied uh, on YouTube. Uh, he said, if you put this uh, end percent on 0.6, 
most of the time it does not do crazy things with faces that become stretched uh, like an egg. The problems that I initially had, indeed it seems to work. Uh, sometimes there are some artifacts, but put it on 0.6 and you might be successful. This is the image that comes out. And it is not upscaled, it is straight out of the first sampler. And I have only 8 gigabytes of RAM in my video card. So this is already incredible that this Koya Deep Shrink Note can do that for me. Uh, we do have other options though. Uh, let's have a look at the workflow again. Let's first go back to 1000 pixels, the standard uh, size. And uh, the, the, the easy factor of this default workflow over here is you can decide yourself which of the nodes you want to connect. Uh, right now only the self-attaching guidance is connected here to the input. Or in this example only the Koya Deep Shrink is connected here to the input. Or in this example they are in series again and they are both connected to the input. Ok, and what does that mean? Well, let's just have a look at the pictures that come out. This is when none of these nodes are connected. This was the image that we just had a, a, a minute ago. And now we switch the SAC node, the self-awareness node on in both the steps, the first sampler and the latent upscale sampler. Let's switch back. Look, this is what came out default. This is with self-awareness guidance on. And that, as always, has a more pop. This is an OK image. This is an image that simply has more pop. We also have the Koya Deep Shrink node and we can use it in both the initial sampler and the latent upscale sampler. This is what comes out and as always if you use the this Koya node it generates just a crazy amount of detail uh, but the image has a little bit less pop so there's a sort of a trade-off you have to decide what you like. Also the speed is, is uh, this is super fast. With the Koya node uh, the rendering is the fastest of them all. It, uh, on my system it is 10 seconds faster and with the sec node on it is 10 seconds slower. And look here at the, the, the little hairs here on in, in the sunlight on her sweater. That is just incredible amount of detail. And also her the hair on her face that has a lot of detail. Uh, you may like it or not like it. You can also always switch st still switch the sag node on. I'm stumbling over my own words. And this is what happens then. Uh, you get more pop, but you do get a little less detailed. Look, the, the hair and, and also these very fine hairs in the sun, they are a little bit gone. So this is a very detailed image as it was, but with the sag node on, you get more pop, but a little less detail. It's up to you what you like best. Let's put them side by side. This is only the sag node on. And this is the Koya plus the SAG node on. You get a completely different image when you put that Koya node on. Uh, but that does not matter to me. I mean every image that comes out was already completely random. And they both followed the prompt. Personally I think the image on the right I like best. But that can be a coincidence. Uh, you have to try yourself what comes out in one situation or in the other. It is so simple with this default workflow to change the sequence of the, the Koya and the SAC node. Uh, you can just play around with it. And this was the image that came out without any upscaling. It is a 2048 pixel image. You might say, uh, again this is with the Koya uh, Deep Shrink node, you might say it, it lacks a little pop, but that is of course very easy to change in a, a picture editor like fast stone it, it takes only five seconds to go from this image to this image which, which has just some more contrast uh, let's put them side by side this is what came out of the uh, sampler and this is after i added a bit of contrast uh, so without any upscaling with only eight gigs of ram this is the kind of images that we can already get. It's just incredible. One more thing about that latent upscale with that denoise factor of 0.54 that I have uh, set. Uh, you can of course also do a sort of compromise. Put uh, your image size uh, on 1500 
then you have already 1500 pixels, which usually came out of the 1.5 upscale latent. Uh, but now we do not upscale latent, we put it on non, and then we can lower the denoise a whole lot. Uh, I just put in 0.2 and then the image that comes out of that latent upscaler, which is not an upscaler anymore, it is just a second sampler pass, a sort of image to image. And now the images do not differ very much. This is the image that comes out of the first sampler and this is the image that comes out of the second sampler and uh, the upscaler after that of course. So now you have uh, a, a very little change but an uh, increase of quality. Right, this was actually yeah, what I had to say about this default workflow. Uh, let's do one more example. Here we have a girl in a black latex dress. Her face and body are dripping wet from the rain and she is in a shopping street. Um, this is the image that comes out or at least this is the image that comes out with, when I have none of the extra node switched on. So this is just the default render, default sampler first step and the default uh, upscaling, latent upscaling. Well, this is a dripping wet la latex dress that uh, there is no question about it. Uh, let's now do uh, add the uh, self-awareness node. Let's have a look. 3, 2, 1, go. Wow, that image has indeed a lot more pop. Back and forth. So default and with the self-awareness on. Yeah, that pops off out of my screen uh, almost. Then we go to the Koya node. Uh, this is what happens with the Koya node, a completely different image, but with high amount of detail. And of course we can do Koya and self-awareness both in series, and then we get this image. It has more pop and still has a lot of detail. We can also uh, let the Koya node render an image of 2000 pixels in one go without any upscaling. And we can also do that trick that we just saw, render on 1500 pixels and then still do upscaling, but do not do that latent uh, upscale and just use a low denoise factor to keep the image the same. Uh, it is uh, your choice, you can do anything you like. It is funny that uh, in the text of the prompt was uh, that she was dripping wet from the rain, but uh, the <laughs> it was translated more or less that her latex dress is now dripping. That is just funny. We have to change the prompt, but that is not the issue here. The issue is what can come out of this default workflow? Well, anything you like. Play with the Koya note and with the SAG note. Play with the upscaler and you can have a lot of fun. And that's what I like to conclude with. Uh, maybe see you back in the next video. And in the meantime, have a lot of fun.